Hey guys, welcome back to another New Makeup Sunday. So this week I have some really fun stuff to unbox with you guys. I have a K-Beauty haul from YesStyle. I also have an Ulta haul where I grabbed some of the new Kiko Milano collection as well as a new Tarte palette. And I also have some Pixi skincare to share with you guys. So just quickly before we dive in, I just wanted to mention that starting this week in June and for the whole month, I'm gonna be doing drugstore themed videos, kind of similar to how Zabrina does her drugstore December. So I thought that would be a really fun idea. I always get requests for drugstore drugstore videos for you guys so it's going to be a mix of drugstore products and also dupes and just everything affordable so definitely stay tuned for those videos coming up in June and also don't forget to stay tuned to the end of this video as well because I will be able to test out some of the products that I opened up this week and let you know my thoughts on some of them so anyway guys let's go ahead and jump into the video and I'll see you back here at the end Good morning guys, it's Monday. I just got my Yes Style order in the mail and this one came pretty quickly. Um, it was about five business days or so, so really not too bad. And I got a bunch of complexion products here, no eyeshadows or anything like that. Um, but the one that I was really, really excited about is the Misha Chobayang, I'm not sure how you say that, um, BB cream, and this is also an SPF 50. I have the Perfect Cover one that I got a while ago, and this one is SPF 42, and I like it. It, but um, there's something about this that kind of reminds me a little bit of the It Cosmetics CC Cream where it has like that glowiness to it and I don't always like that glow on my skin because sometimes it can draw attention to fine lines um, so I was hoping that maybe this one will have a similar texture but maybe not the same glow so why don't we open this up and check it out I got this in the shade 21 which is also the same shade as this and I remember seeing some of the reviews um, that said that this one um, the shade shade range was a little bit better like this one tends to look a little grayish on me and people were saying that the colors of this were a little bit less gray so um, let's go ahead and just swatch it yeah I mean right away the color looks a little bit better than the other one but I can definitely um, swatch that one next to it and we'll see but um, it feels really nice and creamy which is great um, doesn't look like it has quite as much glow as the perfect cover so I'm liking that so far I mean just looking at it on my hand I'm thinking I may like this one a little bit more it's not quite as thick but yet it still has decent coverage to it so let me just quickly um, swatch this one next to it uh, on my arm so you can kind of see the difference so um, here's shade number 21 in the perfect cover and you can see how it's kind of a little bit of like a grayish tone Okay, and then here's 21 in this one. See, you can already tell the difference. It's just a little bit more, um, you know, it looks more like my skin tone. Um, this one just has a little more yellow in it, I think. But, um, you know, once I blend it out on my hand, I think it looks really good. So, um, texture-wise, we can just kind of blend these a little bit so we can see if there's a difference to them. Yeah, so you can definitely tell like how much glowier the perfect cover is. This one has a little bit of glow, like it's not a flat matte or anything, but I feel like this one's more satiny while this one is more glowy. So I really, really like the finish of the new one a lot better. Of course, I'm going to have to let you guys know once I try it out on my face, but um, so far so good. I'm really, really happy with just how it feels and how it just looks really nice and moisturized on my skin. It doesn't look cakey. So um, I think this is going to be really great, especially heading into the summer because it has the SPF. I also got a cushion foundation from Misha because um, the Laneige one that I really, really love is no longer sold anywhere in the US. It's so hard to find. So um, I figured I would check one of these out instead because at least I can get this from Yes Style. They no longer seem to be carrying Laneige in the United States. Um, so this one is called uh, Glow Tension SPF 50. And this is also in the shade 21 Vanilla. I really, really like the compact. I think that's super pretty. And then this is what the inside looks like. All right, so here's a quick look at the cushion itself. It looks a little bit different than some other cushions. Uh, kind of has like more of a rounded top to it. And it's not quite as squishy. I feel like it, it kind of almost feels like rubbery on top. It's kind of interesting. So here's what the color looks like. I'm just gonna go ahead and swatch this for you guys on the back of my hand. I'll just do it on the other hand instead. 
So this kind of feels texture wise a little thicker than some other cushion compacts. Usually they're very, very like lightweight. And this one, it's drying down actually very fast as well. So I don't know if this is gonna be more of like um, a dry formula. It definitely has some glow to it. It's not matte or anything like that, but I just mean texture wise, it feels a little dry. So hopefully this is gonna look okay on my skin. We shall see. Usually cushion foundations are great, like for my dry skin, but I don't know, this one feels a little drier than most. So I will hopefully be able to give you guys an update at the end of the video and let you know um, how that one wore as well. And then I also got two different concealers that were very highly rated. This one's from Apo, which uh, makes those water light tint lipsticks that I really, really love. And this is their Moist Creamy Concealer. And so many people say that this is a dupe for the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. So very excited to try this one out. I got this one in the shade Porcelain. And then this one is the Tip Concealer from, I don't know how to say this brand, the, the Sai, I don't know if what it is, the Siam? I don't know. It's S-A-E-M. So anyway, this one is in the shade 1.5. And this actually has SPF 28 in it as well, which you don't normally see in a concealer. That's kind of cool. So why don't we swatch this one first? I have tried the NARS concealer, so I'm very interested to see how this one compares to that. So here's what the color looks like. It's a little darker than I was expecting a porcelain shade to be, but um, it, oh wow, yeah. This feels very similar to the NARS. It's super creamy, just blends like effortlessly, and uh, it's thin, but yet seems like it has really good coverage at the same time, so. Oh, I'm excited about this one. The texture just feels amazing. It feels really, really hydrating, um, which is a good thing. So I will let you guys know about that one. And then here's the uh, tip concealer. Let's just put it over here, I guess, on this side. Yeah, this one's also slightly darker than I was expecting, um, but not too, too bad. This one feels slightly thicker than the other one. Um, definitely has better coverage. Not that this one had bad coverage, but I would say that um, this one has probably like a medium and this one is more like a full coverage concealer, which I don't always reach for because usually they tend to be really thick and cakey looking. But this one, I mean, I like how it's blending in. It looks really natural and it feels incredibly moisturizing too. So, um, and again, this is my hand, which is a lot drier than my face. So yeah, very excited about these two options and hopefully we'll have some feedback for you guys by the end of the video. And then the last thing I got were two more of these Holika Holika Jelly Dough Blushes. I love these. I got um, the original one I think was Apricot Jelly and this time I got Nuts Jelly which looked like more of like a nude shade and then Grapefruit Jelly which had a little more pink to it. So let me just swatch these for you guys really quick. So if you missed my last video on K-Beauty, these just have like basically a putty-like texture. They're a little firmer than like the ColourPop Super Shocks. They're not quite as like movable as those but they last all day on the cheeks. They're absolutely amazing. So here's the grapefruit one. I really love this color. That's so pretty. And then here's nuts jelly, which I think I'm really going to love this one too, because I love a nude blush. So there's nuts jelly. Yeah, that's gorgeous. And then just for comparison's sake, I'll show you my apricot jelly that I got before. So here's the apricot one. This one's just more peachy. So yeah, grapefruit definitely, it's still like a little peachy, but it has more pink to it. Whereas this one is just more of like a peachy coral. And then we have the nude in the middle. So anyway, guys, that's my little Yes Style haul. And hopefully I'll be able to let you guys know at the end what I thought of some of these. Obviously, I know I already love these. But um, as far as the foundations and concealers go, I will definitely keep you guys updated. 
Hey guys, it's Wednesday. I just got my Ulta order in the mail from last Friday, and I had ordered some of the new Kiko collection called Tuscan Sunshine. Everything looked so pretty. I had a ton of Ulta points, so I really couldn't decide what I wanted to get, so I just got a whole bunch of things. And, um, I, you know, I think Kiko is one of those brands that just doesn't get enough attention, but the products are really, really good. Um, so I definitely can't wait to show you guys these. I also picked up the new Tarte Confessions of a Maneater palette. I thought this looked really pretty as well. It had some really gorgeous like cool tone pink and purple shades so um why don't we just open this one up first we'll do some swatches and then we'll get into the kiko collection so i'm definitely excited about this one it looks like a fun travel palette not that i'm traveling anywhere these days but at some point i will be um so it has two blushes and six eyeshadows in it and the packaging looks very similar to their original man eater palette and then inside here's all the shades and okay this is not what I remember seeing online. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put a picture of the photo on Ulta because this is like totally not what I was expecting at all. It looked like the blushes, I mean, these are beautiful, but they're not that cool tone pink that it showed on the Ulta website. And uh, also these eyeshadows, like they just don't have the same sort of vibe. So in fact, this is kind of reminding me of something and it might be the original Man Eater palette. So hold on one second, I'm gonna go grab that out of my collection and I'll be right back. All right guys, so I actually have two Man Eater palettes. I have the original one and then I have the one that they released later. And I remember being really annoyed by this because the original Man Eater, which one is it? This one. Um, you know, this is what it looked like. It was a really nice palette. It was actually one of my favorites and I really enjoyed using it. And when the new one came out, um, I haven't even used this one yet because I still have this. And I was super bummed because the pictures on the website made this new one look completely different than this one. But as it turned out, when I got it home, it's literally the exact same palette. They just added a black shade. So I was really, really annoyed. And it kind of seems like they're doing the same thing now with this one, because this one, I mean, okay, look at these shades. They have different names, mind you. So just keep that in mind. But look at these colors. I mean, you have this one, looks pretty much exactly like this one. You have this shade that looks like this one. The browns look the same. This kind of burgundy shade looks almost the same. This matte shadow looks kind of like either one of these. I mean, what is going on? It looks like almost the exact same palette. So I thought maybe what we could do is just swatch these side by side. All right, guys, so not an exact shade for shade dupe, like this one here, it's pretty much like a very similar tone, but it's matte in the old palette and it's shimmery here. This one, you know, it's a little bit darker in the older one, the shade's different. I mean, they're all kind of different, except for this brown, I think is pretty much spot on, but it's close enough to where I kind of feel like I didn't really need to bother buying the new one. So there's actually one more palette that I wanna quickly swatch next to the new one. So I'm just gonna remove this one really quick. So the other one I'm thinking of is the Tardis Pro To Go. So let's go ahead and just swatch this one next to the new Tarte palette. All right, so here's the Pro To Go. This shade is definitely very different and actually these two, but the rest of them like almost look spot on. So I really feel like they're just recycling shades for this new palette, which is such a bummer. If you have the Man Eater or if you have the um, Tardis Pro To Go, I mean, honestly, there's really no point in buying this one. I mean, these blushes are really beautiful. I actually didn't swatch those, so let's just swatch these really quick. But, I mean, otherwise, we basically have these palettes already. So here's this one that for some reason didn't even show up. This blush is beautiful. Let me just try going in with this one again. Yeah, so that one's almost more like a highlight. It's really, really shimmery or maybe a blush topper. So anyway, I mean, like I said, it's a pretty palette, but it's so similar to things that I already have from Tarte. I feel like I kind of wasted my money here, so I'm a little bit bummed with this. All right, so let's check out this Kiko collection. I am so excited with this one. So let's start with the foundation. This is the Tuscan Sunshine Luminous Foundation. I got it in shade two. It didn't have the best shade range in the world, but um, you know, it's probably a limited edition collection as most of theirs are. So, you know, I don't expect it to hang around all that long. Um, so here's a look at the tube. It's really pretty. I just love the packaging. And this actually feels very, very liquidy, like when I shake it. 
Can you guys hear that? So anyway, <laughs> let's go ahead and try to see what this is like. Yeah, so it's really runny. It's like a serum foundation. It has that same sort of tip um, as the Flower Beauty blush bombs do. Oh yeah, this is so thin. It's really like a serum texture, which is nice. I mean, it's great for summer. It's very lightweight. And it says luminous, but I'm not really detecting any kind of shimmer in the formula. I mean, it looks like glowy on my skin. It doesn't look, um, you know, matte, but I would say it's kind of more of a satiny type of finish. It blends right in and disappears. I don't know what kind of coverage this is necessarily going to have. I mean, it definitely has some because it canceled out like the redness that's naturally in my skin. But honestly, it's not a big deal. I tend to prefer a light coverage foundation and then just spot conceal where I need to. So I'm actually very excited to try this one out. All right, so next up we have the Tuscan Sunshine Face Palette. And this one looked really pretty as well. I mainly got it for the blushes because I don't wear highlighters all that much, but I feel like I could also use these as eyeshadows because they're just so gorgeous. So let's go ahead and swatch these really quick. Just want to see what the shades look like. So there's the highlights. Then the blushes, this one's a matte, and then this one has maybe like just a slight bit of shimmer to it, but not too much. That's beautiful. It's very subtle, but it's gorgeous. And then there's the shimmery blush, which I think could be just a really pretty topper on top of this one as well. So that's the face palette. Next up, I got the Tuscan Sunshine Blush, and this one's in the shade Tuscan Iris. They had a couple different versions, and I think this one was like a split pan, so let's just see. Yeah, so it's not like a traditional split pan, but it's kind of like an ombre effect, and this one looked like a little bit more on the nude side. I think the other one was pink, so let me just swatch these really quick. I'll just do each side and then kind of swirl them together. So it looks like it's kind of... Not matte exactly, but not shimmery either. It's kind of more of a satin. So here are the two sides separately, and then we'll just kind of swirl it all together. Yeah, so that just results in a really beautiful kind of light peach shade, so really beautiful as well. I also got one of the eyeshadow palettes. There's two different versions. I got this one, which is called Tuscan Escape, and this one looked a little bit more on the cool tone side. The other one was a little bit warmer. They were both really pretty. It was so hard to decide, um, but it's a little bit more of a smaller palette. I kind of like it, though. Um, inside, we have the shades. So these are actually good size pans. Even though it's a small palette, I feel like they're not, you know, teeny tiny little pans. So um, this looks pretty much like it did on the website. I kind of feel like this one online looked a little bit deeper and I'm kind of disappointed that it looks so pale because I was hoping for like a really nice mid-tone shade. But I guess we'll see how it swatches out. So let's go ahead and just swatch these really quick. So I'm just gonna quickly swatch these on my hand. So yeah, they feel very silky. This one in the middle isn't super pigmented and actually um, here it looks a little darker than it actually swatches out. So I mean, I could definitely use this one as more of a mid-tone. I wasn't sure how it was gonna actually look. And these shimmer shades feel very buttery, which is a good thing. Wow, that's very foiled and metallic. Look at those. Those are beautiful. And then here's the last one right there. That one actually has really nice pigmentation for being such a light shade. I wasn't expecting that. So anyway, this palette looks really pretty. I'll definitely let you guys know as I have a chance to try it out this week. And then the last product I got is the Tuscan Sunshine Shiny Lip Stylo. So I feel like they come out with different shades of this particular product with almost every collection they do. I don't know if they have some that are part of the permanent line, but I know I really love this formula. They're kind of like a shiny lipstick or almost like a lipstick lip balm hybrid. So the shade that I got is 01. So let me just swatch it maybe like over here. These are just like the most comfortable lip product ever. Look at how gorgeous that color is. Oh my gosh. That is stunning. It's like a perfect pinky mauve shade. 
And sometimes I feel like mauves or mauves, like they can go a little bit too deep, but this one is just perfect. Like, look at how pretty that is. Wow. All right. So very excited about this whole collection. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Hey guys, it's Thursday. I just got a package from Pixie Beauty and they sent over some skincare in this really, really cute travel bag. And this is their retinol line actually. And I've really been wanting to try this for a long time now. It's retinol and jasmine. So on this little tag here, it says, Dear Jen, time to get your dream skin. Our new retinol and jasmine infused skin treats will take you on a smooth journey to your most beautiful skin. Thank you for all your Pixie love. So let's go ahead and check out the information. Okay, so this is just the collection and a little uh, routine that you can do. So you have the retinol jasmine cleanser. Step two would be to tone with the retinol tonic. Step three is to treat with the jasmine oil blend um, in the AM and then PM, the overnight retinol oil. Um, step four is to moisturize with the retinol jasmine lotion and then nourish with the retinol eye cream. So what I love about all of these is that they have the time release retinol and I usually do the best with that because it's not rushing into your skin all at once. It kind of releases the retinol over time and it just helps to minimize the irritation I feel like. So even the toner has that. That's really nice. So um, let's go ahead and open some of these up and check them out. I love the packaging too. I always love their mint green, but with the purple, I think it looks really pretty. So this is the Retinol Jasmine Cleanser. It says it's a creamy moisturizing cleanser enriched with vitamin A, retinol, antioxidants, and ceramides, and it removes impurities for smoother, more radiant looking skin. So I'll just quickly show you guys the ingredient list in case you want to pause the video. And I'll just squeeze a little bit of this on the back of my hand. I'm just curious about the texture. So it looks like a lotion. Obviously, I would have to add water to this, but it feels very emollient, very creamy. I think it's going to be nice for my dry skin. So I'm going to go ahead and add some water, and I'll be right back. So I just added some water to see if it would foam up, and it really doesn't. I mean, it, it emulsifies a little bit, but it's definitely not one of those foaming cleansers that's going to strip your skin. It just feels really nice. It almost feels like I'm moisturizing my skin at the same time. So I'll have to test this out and see how it removes makeup. Next up we have the toner. This has the Time Release Retinol Elderflower to soften and brighten your skin and Chamomile to calm and minimize redness. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this on the back of my hand. And it just feels like a basic toner. It's watery. There's no stinging or anything like that. It's really, really gentle. And let me just show you guys the ingredient list on the back of the bottle. It does have a jasmine scent to it, which I'm guessing is from the um, jasmine flower and leaf extract. Next up, we have the jasmine oil blend. This is the one that they recommend in the AM, and this has jasmine flower extract to rejuvenate in calm evening primrose to help boost circulation and grapeseed oil to nourish the skin. Just see what the oil feels like. Yeah, I would say it's like a medium weight oil. It's not super lightweight. So I think, again, this is going to be best for drier skin types. It definitely feels very emollient and hydrating. It doesn't feel like some of those dry oils that you see sometimes. It's There's some weight to it for sure. I feel like my dry skin is probably going to love it. And it has that um, jasmine scent as well. So I'll quickly show you guys the ingredients. Next up, we have the overnight retinol oil. So this one didn't have the retinol in it. This one's for morning time. And then this one you can use at night. So it has the time release retinol to smooth and refine, peptides also to firm and revitalize, and then ceramides to lock in moisture. So this is really packed with a bunch of good stuff. So I'm just going to put it over here so I don't mix it with the other oil. This one actually feels a lot more lightweight. And I'm guessing because you probably would layer it with a moisturizer, so they didn't want it to be super heavy. So yeah, this one feels a little bit more like a dry oil type texture, and it's sinking in a lot faster than this one did. So here's a quick look at the ingredient list on this one as well. Next up is the Retinol Jasmine Lotion. So this one says it has retinol again to smooth and refine. It has peptides to firm and revitalize and jasmine oil to nourish and brighten. So I love that this has the combo of peptides and retinol. I feel like it's a really good one-two punch. So, ooh, this cream feels so nice. It feels kind of like the rose ceramide cream from them that I love. It's really, really thick and rich, and again, just great for drier skin types. 
So yeah, this takes a little while to sink in because of how rich and emollient it is, plus I'm layering it over that oil. So anyway, here's a quick look at the ingredient list for this one. And then last but not least, we have the retinol eye cream. So again, this one has the time release retinol to smooth and refine. It has caffeine to depuff and energize. And then it has peptides to firm and revitalize. So I'll just put a little bit of this right here. Yeah, I just think this is going to be so super nourishing on my under eye area. So here's just a quick look at the hand where I applied everything versus the one that I didn't. You can see this one just looks really like plump and healthy and moisturized. And this one is looking dry as usual. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about this line and I definitely want to give it a test run, especially because it has all these anti-aging ingredients. So if you'd like to see a video where I do like a 30 day wear test with these and take like before and after photos, I can definitely do that. I'm currently using Beauty Pie products and I'm doing a 30 day test with those. I already took my before pictures and I have like a week to go with that before I take my afters. So once I'm done with that, I can always switch to this for a little while if you guys are curious about how these products worked out. So definitely let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. All right, guys, so that's all I have, but just a few quick thoughts on some of the products I got a chance to try out this week. So first up is the Misha BB Cream. This is the Chobo Yang one, and I love this so much better than the Perfect Cover. I'm not saying that one is bad, and it's really universally loved by so many people here on YouTube. I actually ended up purchasing it because of Jessica Braun, because I know she really loves that one. And it's not that I don't like that one, but I like this one even more, just because it doesn't have that glowiness to it that just draws attention to fine lines and pores so it has a very similar texture but I do feel like this one is a little bit lighter not quite as emollient so it doesn't feel sticky on my skin like that one can tend to do but I feel like this one has the exact same level of coverage I also like the color a little bit more so the few things that I didn't like about the other one I feel like this one completely solves those for me so I think this is definitely a step up from that one and if you've had the same issues that I have with that I would definitely give this one a try because it is like the perfect foundation and speaking of amazing foundations this luminous foundation from Kiko is fantastic and I'm a little bummed about that because usually these limited editions don't hang around so I'm guessing by the time I'm done with this tube and this collection is long gone I'm not going to be able to repurchase it but it is literally like skin when you put it on and I know I say that about a lot of foundations but this one it really just like I can't tell where my skin is and where this is it just kind of melts in and disappears like even when I look really up close I can't detect this at at all but yet it gives you a little bit of coverage it evens out all the redness and then anything that needed additional coverage like around my nose around my eyes I went in with this moist creamy concealer from a Po, and this one is amazing too it's just like the NARS radiant creamy concealer I can't detect this one on my skin either so when I'm looking up close it's like it looks amazing it just looks like my skin but perfect so this combo is fantastic and I am so happy with it. This one is also just so weightless. You don't feel like you're wearing foundation at all. So I kind of feel like this is going to be my summer combo right here because it's so lightweight, so undetectable. I love it. The only downside to this foundation is that it does have a little bit of a floral scent to it, I want to say. So if you don't like scented foundations, you're probably not going to like this. But if you can get past that scent, and I honestly can't smell it at all. Once I put it on, it kind of completely disappears. But if you don't like putting fragrance on your skin which a lot of people don't then you're probably not gonna like this one um, another one that I wanted to talk about quickly is the Misha compact foundation I used this earlier in the week Ooh, I almost dropped it um, I used this earlier in the week and I have to say like it did look a little bit dry and cakey on my skin so I was kind of bummed about that because most cushion foundations look really really natural and I do prefer the Laneige one to this I mean it didn't look awful but it's not my favorite so I'm still on the hunt for my favorite cushion foundation and then on my cheeks today I'm wearing the Tuscan Iris blush from Kiko and this one was the one with the split pan and honestly when I swatched it on my hand it didn't really look like it was that pigmented but when I dip my brush into this holy cow it is really really pigmented I mean I don't know if my lights are washing it out 
I actually had to kind of shear it out a little bit because my brush picked up so much and it just went on really heavy. So if you're gonna get this, I would say definitely use it sparingly, but it was so blendable and really, really seamless. So I enjoy that one too. And then on my eyes, I'm wearing the Kiko eyeshadow palette in Tuscan Escape. So I ended up using this one for a crease color and it really is very subtle. It's a little bit lighter than it looks in the pan. And then I used this one to deepen the outer corner and I used this kind of silvery one on my lid and I mean the shimmer shades are particularly impressive the matte shades also surprised me they didn't swatch the best but um, they have almost no fallout they have that really rich velvety feel almost like a Natasha Denona shadow so they're not like those super powdery ones that just blend away which I really really liked a lot so I do really enjoy the formula of this one I think it's a little bit limited in the eye looks that you can get out of it but otherwise I really thought that the formula was amazing and also, I'm not wearing the Kiko lipstick today because it didn't really go with my kind of peachy look that I had going on, but I'll insert uh, a picture of me wearing this color, which again was 01, and I, I just love this color so much. I feel like this is gonna definitely be a go-to for me this summer just because it's so comfortable on the lips and the color is so beautiful. So anyway, guys, that's all I have for this week. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, as always, I would love to hear your thoughts on all these products down in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button right here in the corner of your screen, and I'll see you all in my next video. Take care, guys. Bye.